Hi, welcome to Bright Hope Creations. I'm Kara, and today we are turning a skunk into a yeti. I wonder if he still stinks. Uh, well, we'll find out. Anyway, I'm using the large mini slimline stackables, which sounds like an oxymoron, with the Let It Shine and Really Rainbow 6x6 paper packs, and also some white, and a slimline stitched hillside border, the giant XOXO in silver mirror cardstock and pixie dust. And then here is our skunk. This is one of the tiny gift box add-ons, the newest one. So we'll use the body, the backer, the feet, the ears, the front stripe, and the little belly. I'm also going to use the front of the lovely latte die. So here's the Yeti that Lawn Fawn has created. And so when I saw that skunk die, I saw that backer piece and I don't know, it just it just reminded me of, of the Yeti. So I thought, oh, how can we do this? And really pretty simply. So a lot of the pieces just work perfectly to, to create this Yeti. You can see how I'm using mermaid cardstock and also fog and then white for those teeth. That little belly is going to be snipped into two fangs. I'll use sentiments from Yeti or not and also scent with love add-on. All right, I'm starting with a card base that's three and a quarter by six and a quarter and the largest of the large mini slimline stackables. I'm just going to put some adhesive on the back of that and there's the start of our card. Real simple. I kept the back pretty simple because I wanted the focus to be on our Yeti. Now, you can see I wore my red shirt for Valentine's for this for this very occasion. It's also my red shirt for Christmas. And <laughs> it's just my red shirt. Anyway, the second two layers were made with the second largest of uh, the large mini slimline stickables and then this is the regular slimline stitched hillside border and just decided where I wanted it and cut that out on the white and now I'm going to put the sentiment on that but first I wanted to show you a trick that I use quite often uh, my misty gets very inky and I don't always get that off right away so I just use one of those magic erasers and rub all that ink it comes right off and so i just thought i'd keep that in there to show you a little trick of what i do anyway back to our card this is the sentiment from scent with love add-on and also a yeti or not and that yeti or not one i had cut into two to use at one point so i'm just putting them back together and lining everything up so the sentiment will say, Happy Valentine's Day, the best is Yeti to come. I want to pause between the two parts of my sentiment, so I spread them apart a little bit. And now I'm using some clear ink because I want to heat emboss the sentiment in silver. Kind of go along with the background snowflakes that are silver. So stamp that down and now I'm going to clear that away bring in my handy coffee filter and my silver embossing powder sprinkle that on and check that I don't have any little excess pieces there Just wipe anything extra off and then I'll use my heat tool to melt that embossing powder now Lawn Fawn has an embossing pen and I'm going to use that to create the ellipsis between my two parts of my sentiment. Lawn Fawn also has a lot of ellipsis in their ellipses. Uh, I don't, <laughs> how do you do the plural of ellipsis? Anyway, um, in their different stamp sets in their sentiments. So if you didn't want to make your own, you could just stamp them from another set. All right, adding the snow to the card base. And uh, it's perfect for a Valentine around my neck of the woods because lots of snow, lots of cold. <laughs> so here's my giant XOXO and I'm going to layer it. Here it would look with the silver and here it would look with the pixie dust. But I decided to put it together, give some dimension to that. 
and that little hint of the silver to go along with the snowflakes and also with my heat embossing. This giant XOXO is a great size because uh, with lawn fawn critters, they could just pop their heads right, right through those O's or hide behind and peek around the sides. So lots you can do with this XOXO. I even think you could make this card using the Yeti or Not stamp set and have those Yetis just tucked in and around that, that giant XOXO. All right, gonna glue it onto the card and we're all set with the back of the card now. So pretty simple. I'm gonna spend the rest of our time putting together our Yeti. So a really nice, simple background for him to kind of be the star. Bringing out the Yeti pieces here and that backer piece, that uh, oval, is really meant so that you could cut that out and have um, the eyes in black behind the skunk's face, but I cut out that fluffy body with, with it, so that just kind of forms our face for the Yeti. And our face features and horns will come from the lovely latte cup. I'll cut off the horns for now and also just make sure that it is hidden behind his body, so a little bit off the bottom as well and then I'll glue that to the back of his body. Now, I could have colored everything first. Uh, typically, that's what I would do, but I wanted to show you that this little guy looks cute, whether or not you shade him with any kind of markers or, or other coloring. All right, I forgot. I wanted to put that little bit of hair tuft up at the top, so my glue was not dry yet and I was able to put that in there and cut off the excess. And now I have a scrap of storm cloud cardstock to go behind his eyes and mouth, clipped off those fangs from the belly, and I'll glue that piece of cardstock onto the back of the face pieces and just trim it to make sure that it fits right. And then uh, how did I put those fangs on? Well, first of all, I tried to put them on in a way that did not work very well. <laughs> I even pried open his mouth. Uh, that was a little silly. So <laughs> what I ended up doing was just taking that back off, putting a little glue under that mouth, and then slipping up those fangs to the, to the height that I wanted, make sure that they end up in the glue, and then... <laughs> Uh, just adjusted them to where I wanted them. Now, I have these fangs going up above his mouth in my first card. I just had them showing in his mouth. You can do it either way. Uh, and now I can put it back onto the gray cardstock. So uh, that worked a lot better. Now this guy reminds me of a little dog my mom had. It was a Shih Tzu and <laughs> she was always saying, tuck in your teeth. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, tuck in your teeth, little guy. <laughs> anyway, uh, here we go with his horns, and they are the uh, edges of the cup. And I'm deciding how much of them I want to show, and so just figuring that out, putting a little glue on the back, and adjusting them so that they kind of match each other on both sides. Well, he's starting to look like that Lawn Fawn Yeti to me. All right, these are ears for the skunk and again that stripe that goes down his front uh, between his eyes and they are going to be the hands and arms so a little dab of glue and add the little bit of shagginess of his fur and then uh, I'm just going to adjust them to where they're going to end up so one hand's going to kind of go up and the other will kind of go down because of the way I have these shaggy <laughs> arms for his hands. You know, if you didn't cut out the oval for his face and added some googly eyes, he kind of looked like a warm fuzzy. <laughs> I don't know. Did you have warm fuzzies when you were little? Uh, they were a pom-pom, and they had little feet and uh, googly eyes, and you gave them to a friend. It was giving somebody a warm fuzzy. <laughs> Well, okay, so anyway, here are his feet, and this makes him into that Bigfoot Yeti kind of guy, 
And so that worked out perfect for it with the skunk dyes uh, to give him those those big feet, but gluing those on and just adjusting them to to how I want them. And he's pretty much all set. So here I'll show you that he looks great, even not colored. He goes nice with the back, but I'm gonna add some of that purple in to kind of go with the background. And so I'm using a V20. V20 is a very gray type of purple or violet. And some shading in those fog sections with the V20. Uh, that's just going to be my lightest color. So I'm trying to figure out where I want the shadows and just make sure that his face looks like it's receding into that fur a little bit. And then shading around uh, his feet that they're behind the fur as well. That fur kind of takes over everything for him and he needs that fur, right? Cause it's, it's cold. And so uh, now I'm going to all the little, little tufts of his fluff and uh, putting in some lines just to indicate that there's a bit of dimension there. And I'll use those uh, light lines later to help me when I have a darker color to know where I want that darker color, not, not make any little mistakes. All right, one shade up. This is the V22 and just going in where I had already been to increase those shadows, mostly on his gray areas. So his hands and horns, his face and his feet. So like I said earlier, I think this would have been easier to color, not put all together, but really it's not a problem. All right, here is that V20 again, just to blend out that V22. Let's bring it up a little bit. It just adds some dimension to our little guy and shapes his feet a little bit. All right, now here is an RV04, very different <laughs> color. And this is where I'm kind of giving that pinkish purple look onto his fur. Uh, this is what's going to bring that purple from the background into his fur a little bit or reflect in his fur. So it kind of almost looks like Sully, I guess, from uh, Monsters, Inc. That bright pink on the blue gives that that purple look, but then I'm going to blend it in more with the V22 and it looks even more purple now. And then I'll blend that even further with a V20 just to diffuse that color a little bit more, soften it up a bit. People have different ideas about the colors of Yetis. I mean, are they white? Are they, that's the abominable snowman, right? Or, or are they brown? I mean, that's what we usually see for the Bigfoot. Um, I say it's whatever you want because hey, it's got to match our pretty cardstock, right? <laughs> I got a little pink on his paw, so I'm putting a bit of white gel pen on that. And then here he is ready to go on the card. But I decided I wanted to give him a little more character and make him wobble. So I have a mini wobbler here, and I'm going to attach him with that onto the card. And there he is. Oops, I <laughs> decided... He was a little low. All right, adjusting him, and now there he is. Well, I hope you enjoyed the card today. It is a remake of a card I made during the release. And there's that one up above, and you can see his teeth are tucked in on the top. <laughs> All right, I decided he needed a little more fluff in his fur. I don't know why. You know, we, we just do this. <laughs> we look at these cards and say, uh, am I done? Are we ever done? I don't know. Sometimes you just gotta say stop. <laughs> but no, I went ahead and fluffed him up a little bit more with a V20. And now I'll say he's done. All right. Well, again, I hope you enjoyed the card today. And I hope you were inspired to maybe look at your dies to see how they can be changed for other things. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye.